Hello, Arkansas Baptist. Greg Addison from the Arkansas Baptist State Convention with you again with some more helpful information uh, that churches need as we're trying to navigate this period of coronavirus. We uh, have received an awful lot of questions about the government's stimulus package that has the loans that back up your salary and payroll um, obligations with the opportunity to have those freed up and forgiven in the past. There was a lot of confusion at the end of last week um, with banks and governments and some statements that went out and that sort of thing, but we believe that has all been sorted out now, and we'd like to give you some information uh, for your church. We know that these situations are difficult, and you are making uh, unique decisions for your church that you have never made before. And so as a lot of churches try to evaluate whether to engage in this stimulus program or not, we wanted to be able to answer some questions for you to help you in your prayerful decision-making process. Now, I know that Bobby Thomas from the Arkansas Baptist Foundation and his staff have helped a number of churches and institutions with this application process and have sorted through a lot of the details for that. So, Bobby, we want to thank you for being with us today and talking to Arkansas Baptists about how to do this. So, you've been working through some of these. Give us just first uh, sort of an understanding on what this stimulus package is, what it okay. does. Sure. Thanks, Greg. I'll be glad to. And so essentially, it's the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. That's what created the package. So you'll see it referred to as the CARES Act oftentimes. And the part of the CARES Act that we're going to talk about the most today that has what I believe the most application to our churches and ministries is the Paycheck Protection Program more specifically. Uh, it's a program by which um, essentially, the Small Business Administration through the U.S. Treasury is offering to come alongside our churches for those that have a desire to participate and assist them uh, for an eight-week period with payroll cost, rent, and utilities. Okay, great. Now, um, I, there was some discussion about this at the end of the last week. Has mm -hmm. it been solidified and verified right. churches are eligible? Yes, absolutely. So late Friday night, actually uh, it's dated uh, April 3rd at 10.39 p.m., uh, so late Friday night, we received uh, specific guidance from the U.S. Small Business Administration as it applied to faith-based organizations. They issued a five-page frequently asked questions document with answers. Um, one thing, too, before I go too far, we have created a unique resource page on our website, abf.org forward slash PPP for Paycheck Protection Program, where we have not only the application, it's a simple two-page application, but also this uh, frequently asked questions issued by SBA. And they were very explicit. The very first question is, are faith-based organizations, including houses of worship, eligible to receive loans? Yes, is great. a definitive first statement. So. That's great. All right, give us that uh, website link again for that document. Sure, abf.org forward slash PPP. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so if a church is uh, evaluating whether mm -hmm. to do this or not, one of the questions is how do we do this as a church? So can you sort of break down for us what that looks like for a church? Sure. I think the first thing a church needs to go through is their local polity. Um, you are applying for a loan. Um, that could or couldn't be forgiven depending on your actions once you receive the funds. So you need to see what is necessary for us to apply, who, who needs to be part of that application process, who needs to be part of that decision making. Then once you've, once you've kind of reached the point that, yes, you want to apply, um, you really need to contact your local bank. This, this is being administered through the Small Business Administration preferably through a bank that you have an existing relationship with. Uh, this loan is what they call a good faith certification, meaning there's no underwriting, there's no collateral, there's no personal guarantees. It's essentially you and your local bank certifying that the information you placed on the application is accurate. Okay. And so those are those first two steps. Now, there's all kinds of derivatives that can kind of happen next. Uh, we've seen a wide um, range of experiences that folks are having with their local bank. Hopefully, as we move into this week and there's more of those questions that were answered Friday and Saturday, it'll be a more consistent experience for our churches. Uh, we have identified um, an Arkansas bank that's willing to work with any of our churches. If, if for some reason a church's local bank just says, we're not participating or we're not aware of this program for whatever reason, 
Uh, we do have a very small percentage of banks in Arkansas that aren't registered with the Small Business Administration, and so those banks are not eligible to participate. And so um, those, are, those are where we expect that we'll be most involved going forward is where something happens at the local bank where the church can't move forward okay. from there. Great. All right, so you're going to call your bank. bank says, yeah, we do that. Here's what I need from you. What? How do we help the church get prepared right. for what they need? The, the one thing to realize is that the application is the same for everyone. Okay. It is a small business administration application. It's a simple two-page app. Again, we have the application available on that website, abf.org forward slash PPP. Now, an interesting thing that's developed this morning, um, that – that application is a PDF, a fillable PDF. You just type it in. You're able to print it, sign it, initial where you're supposed to initial, and scan it into your local bank. Now, that's an issue. No, Very few of these local banks can you physically walk in and deliver it to someone. You're having to send it by email or zip or whatever the case may be. So what some banks have decided to do this morning is to turn that PDF document into an online application portal at their local bank. So that has created a little confusion in that some banks have done a better job than others yeah, in, in yeah. allowing that portal to work smoothly. So it may be that your local bank says, I have an online portal for you to complete. Again, they're required to ask the exact same questions, exact same information. Now, once you apply, there you can have a unique experience in what your bank asks you to verify. What So again... Your loan amount is going to be based on your average monthly payroll cost over the last 12 months. Okay. Um, some banks we've seen take that at face value. They may ask you to download a payroll report, or, or maybe your operating account is with them and they see your payroll. Easy for them to verify. Others may say, no, we want a proof of payment, and we want you to print 12 confirms from the last 12 months showing a proof of payment. So there's a wide range of experiences there based on the bank. But that, that'll essentially be, you'll, you'll declare things on the application, the bank will ask you from some basic verification of the things you've declared, and then they will submit your information to the SBA. Great. And then uh, uh, the bank says, okay, we've got your application. What does that look like now? What happens next? That's right. So what we're being told, and again, we're in the early part of this, this is a $350 billion program. Okay. The first day, $5 billion was awarded. Okay. We anticipate that will accelerate. Uh, the application window runs through June 30th, although we would encourage any church that has a desire to apply to go ahead and apply early. In other words, we don't anticipate the money to be available at June 30th. No, no, sir, we do not. People yeah. are going to be flocking to this process, and so you will need to get in line That's right. as they distribute until the allotment is, is That's right. complete. It is a first-come, first-serve allotment. Okay. And, right. and and this is not $350 billion for churches. It's $350 billion for, for every small business and all that. in the, in America with under 500 employees. Yeah. And so, um, so once you apply, the, the process was designed that within 24 to 72 hours, you would receive an approval notice from your local bank. Okay. So everything is communicated. The application sent to the local bank, the award is sent back from the local bank. Um, the best practice that we've received from the SBA and that we're encouraging our churches to follow is to set up a designated account or a sub account at that same local bank that you've applied through to receive the funding. Okay. And that local bank will fund that account. And then over the eight week period from the time you're funded to the evaluation period of your loan, you're going to want to document that you've spent those resources on payroll cost, rent utilities, and actually mortgage interest as well as eligible in lieu of rent. And so we would, we would suggest that you actually spend from that account just on those four categories so that you know that everything that I received this money for, I used it for that purpose. Great. And then any other expenses you have, take those out of your normal That's right. bank account process that you have. But this way, this account is clean. The, do the dollars are not co-mingled with others. That's it's right. pretty clear. It went in from the government loan. It went out in the four categories. Everything is slick. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so because the, the key part of this is – so part of this will turn into a grant or be forgiven at right. the end of the eight-week period or June 30th, whichever should come first. And then part of it, uh, you'll either have to pay back or you'll have to convert to a two-year loan with that same lending institution. So, again, anything you spend on rent, utilities, 
um, payroll expense or mortgage interest is going to be considered forgiven and going to convert to a grant. The, the other means of evaluation that's a little tricky, and, and we've not done this yet, so we don't know exactly how this will be executed, um, but the intent behind this program also but in the stimulus program is to maintain your existing staff or, exist, or at least your existing headcount. So there will be also a process of evaluating your forgiveness on June 30th that relates to what is your full-time equivalent at that point versus what was it maybe this time a year ago. Yeah. In other words, the design of this program is you receive this money as an interest-free loan. You keep all of your staff in place. You continue their salaries through this dip in the economy right. because of the coronavirus deal. And if you kept everybody employed at the end of that, then they're forgiving that that's loan. Right. It's essentially a bridge, just a bridge just over this gap. a bridge gap. to keep your employees being paid. Right. Okay, That's great. right. And so one thing, too, and, and we get a lot of questions about this, and the SBA attempts to address this. There was a program that was approved about 10 days before this program was approved. And this program was just approved Friday before last, the last Friday in March. Um, that's called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. So that's kind of more like a disaster relief. It was designed for entities who have already seen um, a 50% more or more reduction in their revenue, or they've been closed due to a government directive. And so we don't anticipate that most of our churches would be eligible or would be appropriate for that lane. Mm -hmm. um, the SBA did clarify that churches are eligible for that, which is interesting. We did not know that until Friday. We had been given some right. conflict information about that. So that is more of the disaster relief. My business has been shuttered. My ministry has been shuttered yeah. channel. This paycheck protection program is, is more the bridge. And they just want to make sure that you're a not getting the two confused or your bank is not that's getting right. the two confused you're applying for the uh the cares ppp that's right and, and you do have to pick a lane you can't apply for both programs okay. and right. so we feel like that most of our churches if they choose to apply the ppp program would be the one most applicable to their situation right. anything else you think that would help our churches well the other thing is is this is a no fee loan uh, there is no fee to the borrower at all so if anyone attempts to charge you a fee in this process just know that that's, that's not genuine to the SBA process. So your local bank that is participating in this program will be compensated by the SBA. There's no cost to you to apply. There's no cost to you to be funded. There's no collateral again. There should be no one that signs a personal guarantee. So, um, again, inevitably in every crisis, there's things that emerge that are confusing. <laughs> right. And so right. we just want to be sure that our churches aren't taken advantage of in that process. Great. Bobby, man, we appreciate your ministry and the ministry of the foundation and how you serve Arkansas Baptists and the partnership that we have with you and the incredible value that you bring uh, to helping so many churches work through this time. So thank you for oh, the wisdom glad to help. today. And church, churches, uh, pastors, Arkansas Baptists, we want you to know that uh, we are all working through this time together. We know that you are likely making decisions that you've never done before. And so please know that however you make these decisions, we are praying for you, for God's protection for your people, for safety, for his provision for your churches and his blessings on ministry during this time. Because it's not just about the struggles of the crisis, it's about the spiritual opportunities that are being created in this time and the ways that we'll be able to share the gospel. And we hear so many great uh, testimonies of how Arkansas Baptists, whether it's through disaster relief teams in Jonesboro or just your churches, working with food banks, serving and ministering in the communities where you are. And so we hope all of these things, and we pray that all these things will help you as you navigate this time. Please let me pray for your churches. Bobby and I would love to pray for you as we close. Lord, we thank you that you are always there. You are always faithful. Just as your word says, you are our refuge and strength, a always ever-present, abundantly available help in times of need in times of trouble, in times of struggle. And we know that you are there, and so we trust you. We also see that your hand is on Arkansas Baptist churches. The testimonies are incredible about the ministry and people getting saved and all the creative ways that Arkansas Baptists are reaching out to touch our state with the gospel. And so, Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless our churches, keep your hand on them. As our pastors and student pastors are, are preaching online in so many ways, we pray 
pray that you'll open doors for people to be saved. Give effective open doors for the preaching of the gospel through all these different airwaves and the ways that people are, are receiving the gospel. We pray that you will provide financially for our Arkansas Baptist families. Some are safe during this time and some are struggling economically during this time. We pray that you will provide for them and bless them, provide the needs of our churches so they can continue to do ministry and have a great testimony that you are our God and you are faithful in these times. Lord, we pray that in all of this time you will use it for your glory, use it to call people to yourself, and we pray for revival and spiritual awakening uh, through this time. Use this as an open door to step into our lives and into our world and bring a testimony of Jesus into lives and the homes that need him. Lord, we pray that people will be saved. The church will be stirred and called to a strength we've never seen, and you will use this to turn people in our state to you. Lord, we pray these things in faith, in strength, knowing that you are faithful to your promise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Arkansas Baptist will continue to pray for you and continue to check here for information as we walk through this time together.